Well, let's take a look at the SPI Serial Communication Standard. We'll look at the SPI ExpressVI options, become acquainted with terminology, and take a look at the signaling waveforms. SPI is an abbreviation for Serial Peripheral Interface, and this is a technique originally developed by Motorola Semiconductors, and Motorola is now known as Freescale. SPI is a synchronous data transfer technique. That means that we have a dedicated clock signal which is generated by the bus controller. SPI supports multiple master devices and it also supports fully bi-directional data transfer. You can have an arbitrary number of bits per transfer, although it's most common that you will have 8 bits per transfer. You can see section 8 of the 68HC11 reference manual for complete details about SPI, and this is a document that's linked in the video description. Now let's take a look at signal definitions and terminology for SPI. We have one device designated as the master and a second designated as the servant. We have two data transfer lines. This allows simultaneous bi-directional data transfer. We have a third line that carries the bit clock that synchronizes the data transfer from master to servant. And finally, we have an active low chip select line. Now the line going from master to servant is called MOSI, master out servant in. It's an input on the servant device and an output on the master device. This one is commonly called MOSI. M-I-S-O, that would be an input for the master and an output from the servant, often pronounced MISO. Serial clock, S-C-K. And then finally we have servant select. Again, this is an active low style signal. And the servant only responds to the remaining three lines coming in when that servant select line is low. If we only have one peripheral device, it's perfectly fine to just go ahead and permanently tie that line low. If you have multiple peripheral devices, however, you'll need one MyRio digital output line for each peripheral. This is how you would handle multiple peripherals. All of the three lines, MOSI, MISO, and Serial Clock, are connected together, and then we use dedicated digital outputs to serve as servant select lines for each peripheral. Now let's take a look at the setup for the SPI Express VI. You can pick which of the two connectors you'd like to use, either A or B. This is a reminder of the pin numbers for each of the SPI signals. I'll mention that serial clock SCK and clock CLK are the same thing. You can designate it as write mode, that would be from master to servant device, with my real being the master. Read goes the other direction, or you can do a simultaneous write-read operation. Frequency specifies the frequency of the serial clock. Notice that you can span the range of hertz all the way up to megahertz. And you can select a wide range of values. Simply press the validate button to make certain that your particular frequency is supported. You can go all the way up to 4 megahertz, and you just need to know the limits of operation for your particular peripheral device. Over here, the frame length is defaulting to 8 bits. Frame length is the number of bits that's transferred per transaction. MyRio supports anywhere from 4 to 16 bits per frame, and 8 is most common. I'll come back to these advanced options as we work our way through the bus timing. All right, in terms of the signaling waveforms on the bus, I will organize the four as shown. This is an active low servant select, so that needs to drop low, and then the servant is ready to start interacting with the master device. With the clock polarity set low, serial clock is normally low. Then according to what we've designated as bits per frame, Serial clock generates the corresponding number of pulses, in this case 8. Clock phase is defaulting to leading right now, and that's the leading edge of serial clock. 
That indicates when the MOSI signal is stable. That is, uh, MOSI is stable on the leading edge of that serial clock. We could also designate trailing if you wanted to. Some devices require the timing to work that way. We still generate eight data pulses, but the question is, when is the data stable with respect to serial clock? Clock polarity could also be selected as high, and that will invert serial clock to make it normally high. Data direction. We can designate either most significant bit first or least significant bit first. Again, with the default, it's MSB first. If your particular peripheral needs it to go the other direction, then you simply select LSB first. Now, one of the most interesting things about SPI is the possibility of simultaneous bidirectional data transfer. While the bits are shifted from master to servant, the servant can also be shifting from itself back to the master device. And so that MISO waveform is going to look like this. As long as servant select is high, then the MISO is going to be in the high Z state. As soon as it drops low, then it starts making bits available on the MISO signal. After transmitting eight bits, assuming that the servant is oriented around eight bits, we're not exactly certain what that value will be, but most likely it's going to be the next MSB queued up. When the servant select raises high again, then the MISO output goes back to high impedance mode. These settings are most common. I suggest that you go with these defaults first and then see your data sheet for the peripheral to find out if you need something different.